Joining me now from Seoul is correspondent Andrew Salmon. Andrew, why carry out these tests at this point in time? Yeah, I mean, the timing is is basically, it, it's impeccable. Um, today, Sung Kim, who is the um, US point man on North Korean affairs, the, the main envoy for the whole issue of North Korea, arrives in Tokyo for meetings with his South Korean and Japanese counterparts. Now, originally, their agenda was to be how they can diplomatically re-engage with North Korea. But with the, these launches over the weekend, North Korea has very clearly set their agenda for them. Just how significant is this particular test, Andrew? Well, in one sense, it's not significant at all. In another sense, it could be very, very significant indeed. OK, so the point is this was a not a ballistic missile, which is the kind of long range missile which goes up and comes down in a parabola. And that kind of missile is banned uh, by the UN. North Korea is not allowed to own or test those kinds of, of missiles. This was a cruise missile, which is generally a short range missile, moves on a flat trajectory and is usually used against tactical targets. And North Korea is not banned from owning or testing this type of missile. However, in state media, North Korea made clear that this is a new strategic weapon. And that raises the possibility that North Korea could mount a small nuclear warhead on this kind of small tactical missile. And if that's the case, that will present um, an extraordinary new problem that could feasibly confound the air defense planners in both Japan and South Korea. We've also heard uh, from an unconfirmed media source in Seoul today that these uh, missile tests which were launched in North Korea on Saturday and Sunday, were not picked up by either American or South Korean detection devices. Andrew Salmon reporting there from Seoul. Thank you.